So like I said, these notes look just a little bit different, but we are talking about slope today, okay? And when you see a little skier on here, it's because we use slope to describe things that we already do and see in real life, like the slope of a ski hill. Um, I also think of the slope of a roof or the slope of some stairs. Like in my house, the stairs are really steep, so the slope has a very steep slope. Um, basically, slope is measured by the rise over the run. So this is the vertical change over the horizontal change, okay? Slope is represented by the letter M, and I think it's like a French word. That's where that comes from. And... Um, so I'm going to give you a few different things to fill in here. The first thing is, is that we do have a slope equation and we're not going to use this until tomorrow, but this is y2 minus y1. Basically you're taking two y coordinates and you're subtracting them. This gives you the rise. And then on the bottom we have x2 minus x1. This is taking the difference in the two x coordinates and giving you the run. So this is how to do it algebraically. Um, slope represents the rate of change. Slope should be written as a fraction in simplified, simplest form. Okay. And let's see what else. The slope of a line can be determined from a table by um, counting units on a coordinate plane or by I don't know why this last one, the slope formula. By counting units on a coordinate plane or I'm going to say subtracting coordinates. Okay, so today we're going to focus on finding coordinates or the slope from a graph. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you are going to kind of form a triangle between two points. So I'm going to do that really quick. I like to go from the left to the right. Okay, so do you see how I form those triangles? So basically you're giving yourself directions how to get from one point to the other, and you have to pay attention to the direction that you go. So for example, if I start at this bottom point, I am gonna go up, and I have to count how many units I'm going up. So I went up one, two, three units. So up is a positive movement. I went up three units. And then to get to the point, I would go over two units. So that's also a positive two. If I were to write the slope of those two, it would be expressed as three over two. You do the rise over the run. On our next one, I have to move down to get to my next point. So down is a negative movement. I went down one, two, three, four, five, six units. So this is going to be a negative six. And then I went to the left, one, or sorry, to the right, one, two units, and that's a positive two. This slope ends up being a negative 6 over 2. The slope does need to be expressed in the simplest form. So what does 6 over 2 reduce to? It reduces to a 3, so it's a negative 3 for our slope. Okay. Our next one, from to get from this point to this point, I went up two units, so it's a positive two. 
and then to the right, one, two, three, four units. So that slope is a two over four. Two over four reduces to one over two. Couple things to take away from this. Positive slopes are going up. Negative slopes are going down from left to right. And I kind of think of this like reading and I'm always gonna work left to right. Okay, do you have a question? I, I like to always start from the left. There's no, there's no set rule. Technically, I could have made um, lines going the other way, but you avoid more negatives if you always start left to right. If I would have started, let's say if I started on this dot, I would have went down three, which would be a negative three, and then I would have went left two, which would be a negative two. Well, negative three over negative two would become positive because a negative and a negative goes to a positive, but it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome. So technically, that you could go the other direction as well. The big thing is, is that you always have to move up and down before left and right. So it's always rise over run. Um, okay, a couple other little things here. The slope of a horizontal line, so a flat line like this, would be zero. The slope of a vertical line, straight up and down, is undefined. And maybe you guys want to draw a couple little lines here to remind yourself what vertical and horizontal looks like. Oh, sorry there. Okay. Remember that up and right are positive movements. So when I counted up and when I counted to the right, those were both positive. Down and left are negative movements. So if I went down, that would be a negative. And if you went to the left, that would be negative. So we are going to just do one. I'm going to skip this because I'd like to teach this tomorrow. So this one says, plot a line that starts at the origin. So the origin is right here and has a slope of a negative three. Okay, so we're gonna start here. Now, if it has a negative three, but we like slope to look like a fraction, any whole number, you're gonna put it over one. Okay, so this means a negative means I'm gonna go down. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, and then to the right, one. Yeah, it went down three, right one. And then I'm gonna connect my two points and I'm gonna show you guys something. So they said to do this and then to label it A. So I wanna show you, I did my down three, right one, right? Negative three, one. But technically I could have also went up three and then my negative could have been right there did that was that point on the line yeah so just so you guys kind of have a reference um, negative three over one equals um, positive three over negative one or you could write it out in front so these three are all the exact same thing. Doesn't matter if that negative is with the bottom number or top number. Okay, so then they say plot a line that starts at zero, four. So zero positive four is up here. And it has a slope of negative three, four. So I always put the negative with the top number, just that's how I do it. So I'm gonna go down three, one, two, three. And then over four. One, two, three, four.
And then this line is B. Okay. So the takeaway from this is it says steeper slopes have greater um, numbers. So for example, the pink line that I have here is steeper. Well, that has a slope of negative three. B is not as steep. It has a slope of negative three fourths. So three fourths is smaller than three. So the smaller the number, the less steep that it is. Now we're kind of going to talk about positive and negative slope. So it says graph four lines, graph four different lines, all with different negative slopes. Show each slope and compare the steepness. So like I said, we're going to do this together. I'm going to graph four lines. So we'll do a really steep one to start. We're going to make them all negative. So this one has a slope of down one, two, three, four, five units and over one. So negative five over one is the slope of this line. Negative five over one. And then we need another negative. So I'm going to do down. This one's not quite as steep. Okay, and then this one is a down two right one so the slope is negative two over one and then let's do down three over two okay went down three over two Down three over two. So this one has a slope of negative three halves, which negative three halves is really, if you think about it just as a number, is like 1.5. So this had a slope of five, this had a slope of two, this had a slope of 1.5. So you can see how the bigger the number, the steeper the slope. We'll do one more. Have another color. This one has a slope of one over one, so it's kind of light. So you can tell that it's the flattest line. Okay, they all have negative slopes. This one I went down one, right one, down one, right one. So they all have negative slopes. Okay. So it says slopes will be represented with fractions with a greater, or it says steep slopes with a greater and they call absolute value. And the reason why we use this term is because if I said, well, which number was bigger, you would say, oh, well, negative one is bigger than negative five. Yes, that's true, but the absolute value makes everything positive and so we can say, the, you know, the bigger the negative, the steeper the slope. So they just kind of use that to phrase it. Okay, our last little part here, it says sketch an example of each. And so we are going to sketch a positive slope. So a positive slope would go up from left to right. Negative slopes go down from left to right. 
zero slopes are a straight horizontal line. When I think of zero slopes, I think of like, okay, you, you're skiing here. Well, if you're skiing on a flat line, are you going very fast? You'd be like, oh, the slope is zero, okay? And then this one, undefined, is a straight vertical. And I'm going to pretend that you're a skier and you're at the top of a steep triple diamond hill. You would say that it's so scary that it's undefined. You can't even define how scary it is. Okay? So that's what you're going to think about. You're going to think of our little skiers here. Okay. Then the last little part, we are just going to practice ordering from steepest to least steep. So the steepest is the biggest number. The least steep is the smallest number. And I know I wrote that really small in there. So if you have one third, and I'm gonna write these over, one third, three, three halves, and three fourths. Which one is the biggest number? Three. Okay, then what comes next? What does three halves look like? Think of it as a mixed number. This is actually like one and a half, right? So that would come next. Then what? Who's bigger, three fourths or one third? Three fourths. Three fourths. Good work. And then the last one is one third. Okay. Okay, so you have two worksheets. The only thing that I want to talk to you about is that I provided dots on all of these for you to find the slope of. But if you were given a graph that did not have these dots, like let's look at number five. This one doesn't need to know um, the slope, but when you're trying to find those points, you're looking for that perfect spot that it intersects the coordinate grid, okay? So if you look there, notice that this line intersects perfectly right there. I would say that it intersects perfectly right here and right here. So if they did not provide those points for you, that's what you would do, is you would find those perfect intersections. If you look at these, the perfect intersections was here, but if you follow this line up, it doesn't, cross perfectly again until this point. That's why those dots are there. That was just one other little thing that tends to confuse students because I, I give you some with the points on and then all of a sudden if I take those away, that seems to get tricky. 